Hey guys, it's Cyrus of Chaos. I'm here with Jeff Tourette, and we're going to be talking about the semifinal from World Championships this year between Son and Mepstead. Have you fenced either of these guys before? Uh, I fenced Son in pools a couple times. Um, he's, I mean, he's very standard Korean, but like he's a little bigger than the rest of them, so he's a little slower. When you say standard Korean, you just mean like really fast, really athletic, kind of crazy? Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's a little more unpredictable than um, a lot of the other countries. So, I don't know if you remember, like, if you look at those crazy videos of, like, the Olympics in 2012, I think it was, when Kwok, I think, or Choi, one of the Koreans got uh, beat Baldini in the bronze medal match, or lost to Baldini in the bronze medal match. Yeah, I think it was Choi. He beat Baldini. Yeah, yeah, he was, like, crazy ridiculous with like the way he moved his legs and, and all the actions that he did so it's like a lot of the Koreans fence similar just not to that extent yeah <laughs> um so going into the belt you, you can see like there's a lot of like very big actions um huge like rhythm changes and stuff like that it's very unpredictable fencing um, but that also leaves you you know open for for mistakes if your opponent's really ready so yeah, you can kind of, the, the advantage of being awkward is it's, it's less predictable, but you can also kind of pick the person's technical mistakes apart. Exactly, yeah. And Marcus is really good at just kind of waiting for his opportunity and choosing those, so. Yeah, he's so technical, like that. like all the BBFC fencers. Yeah, very, very patient, waits for his moment, and, and then capitalizes. Yeah, I, I feel like... As a technical fencer, it's almost like if you don't let the awkward fencer bully you, you should have an advantage in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. But it, it really just depends on like the mindset and the attitude of the two fencers. Yeah, I mean, also, it, the bronze medal or the semifinal at the World Championships, emotions are riding high, and it's also the ability to just control that. Yeah, it's um, true. There are so many more factors at play than just like the fencing. Yeah, exactly. It's hard. All right, All right ready? Let me start it. And here we go. Wow, real aggressive so, right off the bat. Uh, yeah, right off the bat you get a little bit of running from, from so on. It's also kind of funny, on an unrelated note, that you can hear the commentary right next to me, because I was filming this from the World Championship commentary box. <laughs> yeah, you could hear in the background there was the, I don't know the names of the guys, but they were, they were saying some of the things they always say. Yeah. <laughs> Mark is a little more, more tense, or well, he was at least, for that one touch. You kind of force it a little bit, which is something you don't see him do very often. Yeah. The Brooklyn Bridge fencers tend to be so patient and just kind of, like, the, the feeling is, like, you don't have to wait for something. Like, you don't have to make something happen. You can wait for something to happen and, until that stops working. Yeah, don't don't fix what's broken, really. Lots of line. You're going to see lots of line. Mm-hmm. And they're very, um, like, they're very set in their legs, very, like, low on guard, ready to move, ready to explode in either direction. Yeah, I see what you mean. Really, really, like, grounded. Yeah, but it, the problem with that is it leaves you vulnerable sometimes when you're fencing really fast fencers, like when Son just did that attack. Sometimes you're not quick enough on your legs to move back and get away from it. Let's look at that again. Yeah, it was especially, almost like... Especially in that wide stance, too. Um, it's harder to, to pick up your legs. Yep. Son already did a full step there, yeah, before Marcus really... Yeah, it was almost like he was just, like, a beat late. Yeah. And he did hit him first, but Son was already, like, ready to finish, so... Yeah, the distance was too... He closed the distance too well, and it was... Just a nice, nice touch by Son there. Yeah.
what's good though is I think Marcus is really good at using line to kind of adjust that distance and force his opponent to be in the distance that he wants him in so that even if he reacts even a little bit late he's good enough at managing to get away with it I guess and kind of set up his own actions from the line yeah, line is almost like an execution test, right? Because if you if you get too close, you just get hit by it. So it kind of forces the, op the opponent to be, like, respectful of your space. Exactly, yeah. And then from there, you can start setting things up. Mm -hmm. Got a cotton preparation. Son really wants to go forward here. And Marcus really wants to go backwards, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because of that, you're probably going to see most of this bout happening either in the center or past Marcus's on guard line. Yeah. I'd like to see if they fence just in the past, and like, I want to see if there's some, some reason why they're, like, both of them are employing, you know, this tactic or saying on this side of the strip or if this is just how it ended up so they called attack stop there i think so let's look at it again he may have also yeah, just think... seen marcus extending first or a combination of both yeah even with the step back i think son is late i don't know if they'll change it but he just looks like he's waiting for marcus yeah yeah, yeah he does that little jump forward and just hesitation so that's good timing Nice touch. Yeah, and that's that's part of having really good technique, right? It's just ready to take over a little faster. Exactly. Ooh. So I actually like something that happened there before he... So, like, at this point, when it looks kind of like he's about to fall off balance, mm -hmm. he crosses back and just, like, gets... Gets his legs back underneath him really quickly. And so right here, he's he's again totally on balance and ready to defend himself. Actually looks a little like Garrick right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Marcus is extremely athletic too, so he's really good at, at doing, kind of keeping his legs underneath him and reacting to, to stuff like that. And that was actually a perfectly dumb counterattack, a line to counterattack. Yeah. The line kind of makes it hard to judge the distance, and then once he... I mean, Son doesn't slow down. The distance gets a lot, it gets a lot closer, and you can sneak in a counterattack like that. And the angle that he he or the, the part of his target that he covered was good because it was the same part that Son tried to hit him on last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice touch. Ooh! Speaking of nice touches, that was great distance. Yeah. I don't think we're gonna get a replay of that, but that was a really nice touch. What's good about that though is. So when Marcus, uh, here I'm gonna pause it for a second. Yeah. When uh, when Marcus fences, every action that he does is like a lot of intention behind it, and it's very confident. And that's always good to do because even if you're doing the wrong action, sometimes it'll work. Right, right there, he got caught on it because he went fully for the lunge and didn't have the like wasn't able to recover on time. Mm -hmm. So he got hit by the getaway goal. But he's also learned like a little bit more about Son, what, what Son is thinking right now and stuff like that. And so when he does actions in the future, as long as he stays confident, that's what's going to get him through the bat, I think. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm confused about why he actually decided to go there. Because if you... Let's watch this in slow-mo. On YouTube, if you go to this little cogwheel, you can change the playback speed right here. So let's watch this one in slow-mo and see. Because Son is not moving at all. Marcus lunges... Like, does a pretty full lunge, but Sun hasn't moved at all. And it seems strange to me that he, like, he decided to do as full a lunge that as he did there without... Do you, mind you know what I mean? A little earlier. Like, right before he did the lunge. Or a couple, like, a second or two before. Yeah. I, I'm, it, it's possible he was also expecting Sun to maybe counterattack or, or do something other than just stand there. Ooh. Good counterattack. Yes. 
might have gotten there. It was just a straight lunge there, too. It was just he knew what Son wanted to capitalize. That was a good touch. Very smart. Uh, happy go lucky. <laughs> wow, it's only been one minute, and the score is four four already. This is actually really unusual for about usually with uh, Marcus, and he's very patient. <laughs> yes, so I exactly. Think the fact that Son is. It's pushing so much, it's really driving the speed. Ooh! Wow. Rushing a bit there, but... And he even had the counter repose, he just missed over the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, it, it was harder because he was, he was a little bit off balance after that one. Um... But he hadn't really attacked like all about. I think it's totally yeah. That was the first one. There and, and try, try and, and surprise him. Yeah. And he he almost got him. So. It was a good idea. He just missed. Yeah, it might be something to bring back in a couple, in a couple of touches. That's a nice touch. Yeah. Wow. That was a long line too. Yeah. And it was like three steps is, back, right? Yeah. The other thing is, even if someone caught the blade like towards the end. Marcus managed a distance to where he was close enough where Son wouldn't even have been able to hit. Um, even with a counter attack right after he took the blade. Really nice touch. Yeah. I actually really like that angle, that side angle, because you can see yeah. the disengage that he does. Two disengages around it. Yeah, and he, you know, he might even have broken the line a little bit with his arm, but it's the, just the, the fact that he managed the distance so well made it so that it was kind of a guaranteed touch for him. Yeah. It was very nice. I like that. It was like option select almost. That would have also been very nice. Yeah. Man. Very pretty. He's finishing from a kind of far away with kind of a short lunge now. I think he got scared from that original one where he, where he finished short. So if you go back to that whole string, let's watch this string again. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so there's going to be just a couple times where he's just finishing short. I think he's either trying to bait some or maybe a little scared to do a full lunge. Well, he's been getting like most of his example. touches on defense, so... Yeah, but I think he was, he was definitely looking for something here, but that's three, three lunges that he did in a span of, like, six seconds. Um, and then after he gets a little impatient and falls right into the, the parrot post. And I think he strayed a little bit away from the game plan there. Um, but Marcus is also really strong mentally, so I think he'll, through the rest of the battle, he'll probably just readjust and, and fix the mistakes. When you say the game plan, when you say the game plan, you mean of trying to draw an offensive action and just being patient on defense? Yeah, I kind of manipulating the distance so that he's in his distance because he's shorter than Son is mm. and also being able to find and to, to draw Son's kind of long fast attack out and capitalize on those mistakes I think that that's kind of what he's looking to do or at least that's what's been working for him so far um, I know there's one touch coming up where he catches him when Son is sleeping but for the rest of them so far it's been Son kind of rushing at him and him finding the moment finding the distance to, to catch him in those, in those moments okay Let's see if he goes back to that now. Ooh! So, if you hit that first counterattack, that would have been exactly... The plan? That was, that was very, yeah, that was very well set up. Just missed. Yeah. Um, but, like, I don't know, this is kind of like in Saber when you... When you win the phrase, you know, it doesn't matter as much when you lose a touch because you were in control. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a touch that, like, happens. It's not, like, it's not like he outfenced you on that specific touch. It's just that you missed your action, you know? And so you can get back, and he's still 
but he still doesn't really know what to do um, in that situation. And I, I like that attitude a lot. I think too often people lose a touch and just think that they did the wrong thing, but it's really important to understand why you lost the touch. And exactly. in that situation, as you say, the counterattack was the right time. He just missed, whether it was because he got parried or he just went over the shoulder, like whatever the reason was, the timing was correct. The execution was the problem there. And so Sun got that touch, but it doesn't mean necessarily that Mepstead did the wrong thing. He just didn't execute it very well. Exactly. And that shouldn't discourage him from doing it in the, again, again in the future. If anything, it should be encouragement to keep doing it. Just execute it better. Exactly. And so I would say to people who are doing analysis of themselves fencing, just like try to understand why you lost the touch. That was a great perimeter post, actually. The, the fact that he knew someone was going to finish short um, because he had just counterattacked, you know, so someone was a little more threatened by it. Yeah, the next. Location, perimeter post. The next step in the tactical Very wheel. Very good mix up. Wow. Same thing again. Yeah, that's terrific. Especially, like, incorporating the line. This time making you feel a little closer than it is, because I think he had his arm a little bit bent. Um, managing the distance just perfectly there. Yeah. Sun seems a little scared of the line now, which is good for, for Marcus. Definitely, it allows him to set up so many more actions. Ooh! Wow. Okay. Yeah, Sun is rightly a little scared to attack right now. Yeah, I think he's lost a little bit of confidence. Um. <laughs> it's funny listening to myself in the background. <laughs> What's good is Marcus is still, you know, patient, not really forcing anything too, too much. Like, even when he's attacking or, or, or attacking when he's not super sure about it, he's going from a large enough distance to where he can come back and be relatively safe. Wow. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's, that's a great touch. Yeah, it was. Push him closer to the end. So they didn't know anywhere to run. And then Marcus's attack could hit. And he also caught him with kind of the straight legs there. That's great. You mean uh, Sun's legs were up, like he was yeah, too upright? So, so he, yeah, he brought his feet together right there. And then it's a lot harder to get moving when you're in that position. It's very dangerous to get your legs kind of in that feet together, legs straight. That's sort of what we were talking about before, how a technical fencer can, like, can catch those mistakes on an awkward fencer and capitalize exactly. and get touches on them. Exactly. One minute break. Mark is definitely gaining some momentum here. So what would your, what would your changes or not changes be for each of these fencers? Um, if I'm Marcus, I don't want, so I know that sounds kind of scared to attack, um, but I wouldn't force my own attack and give him a chance to get back into it, right? So I, I'd be working mostly, um, to stay on my side and occasionally go for an attack in preparation because Son is going to be hesitating a little bit when he's pushing. Mm -hmm. If I'm Son, I will want to also be patient and set up my attacks more of in a, in a one tempo sort of way instead of kind of running a little bit and extending my attack with my own back because that's when I've been getting hit by counterattacks and then I've been finishing short and getting para posted so maybe finishing in one tempo like a step lunge or something like that so that even when Marcus is a para post I have the time to come back and counter pair if that's necessary or get away and at that point it's more um, on your terms than it is on Marcus's yeah exactly exactly and and um I guess I, I just, I think that knowing Marcus, he's not going to come and run me down my, uh, my side of the strip, so I have all the time in the world to set up my actions. Yeah, probably not. Um, so just to be careful going in. Of course, it's easier said than done, Yeah, so we'll see what happens. 
lots of people had a hard time attacking Marcus on this day. <laughs> I think everybody has a hard time attacking Marcus. <laughs> Ooh, that was a good mix-up. Yes, it was because he he's not been aggressive, especially off the line at all. Mm-hmm. That's, good. <laughs> That's good. I was just about to say. I was just about to say, Sun is being so much more careful when he's attacking, and then he gets hit by something like that. Yeah, he's just, he's also, because the thing is, he's also a little nervous, because he's attacking, he's extending his attacks so long, that he's vulnerable to those attacks in prep, and during, like, lapses of concentration. It's hard to say, like, super concentrated. Yeah, I think you were saying in the last video we did, like, the longer your attack goes on, the harder it is to maintain that high concentration. Exactly. So you can get caught in preparation like that when you just when you have a momentary lapse. So it's very dangerous to do, especially against defenseman like Marcus, who's so good at finding those little moments. Speaking of little moments. <laughs> that was interesting because it looked like he like was about to stop and go backwards, and then instead he like he just exploded forward. I think Marcus definitely has some confidence right now. Um, he feels like he's in control. And I think that's what's kind of dictating how the bat is going. He's really controlling everything going on right now. <laughs> I, yeah, I missed that touch a little bit. I got a little... Um, it cut out on my end. No problem. Uh, Marcus okay. had that one. They were just both a little slow on the, the infighting. Yeah, on their amaze, but he, again, that's another one that, like, Son rushed and Marcus caught the counterattack. He just didn't quite. Mm hmm. Wow. Man. Or a Mies from a slipping position. <clears throat> <laughs> oh my god. See, that just speaks to the athleticism. Yeah. Sometimes you get touches like that when you have the physical shape to, to be able to do that. It's like sometimes you also watch Garrick. That's the same thing. He'll it'll look like he's about to like fall down and lose a touch, and then he'll just kind of throw his arm out and get back under his feet, and somehow... <laughs> you can flick on the back. And they're like, okay, <laughs> that's scary for you. I guess now you could say that's just Marcus. Wow, that was so... that was, That's a really cool replay angle. Yeah. It's a nice shot of Dan's head, too. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, you have a beautiful head. I would call it beat attack. Okay. What did you think? It was a little slow, so I wasn't sure. Okay, that's beat attack. Yeah, I looked at it again. Or maybe even just attack like per post off target from the right. So right. Six on's going to hit him or counter attack or something, and, and Marcus just clearly takes the blade and finishes. Yeah. And, yeah. Surprised Marcus hit off target there. From that replay, it looked pretty good to me. Yeah, I think it was because he closed the distance a little too quickly because Son wasn't ready. And he hit him on the back arm, I guess. Yeah, maybe. Or like right below the, the LeMay on the leg or something. Yeah.
Ooh. First attack off target. Yeah, I think so. One of the um one of the problems I think with filming foil and epee in general is that uh there's so much going on besides just the distance, but from this angle, the only thing you really get a feel for is the distance. So you lose a lot of the blade actions and stuff. But yeah. because the room is so dark and the this strip is so well lit, you can actually see a lot more of the depth of the blade actions than you can normally, which mm -hmm. is which is kind of nice. Yeah. Especially from this angle up here. Yeah. Like in Saber, whenever they show a replay like that from the side, it's annoying because you lose the sense of distance, which is really the only important thing in Saber. But in Foil, those mm -hmm. replays are great. Uh, he had him set up for a pair of posts there. I think he just lost a little steam towards the end of that touch and wasn't able to come back for the ferry. Let's see that again. Oh! Yeah, right there off the line, he just couldn't get his legs out in time, but that was... And that final... Provocation. And that final thing from Marcus, the repose looked almost like a little bit lazy. Yeah. Because I think, I think Son must have hit... Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, think, I think you're right. I thought it was Marcus's off target, but you're right. Touche! I think he... Uh, he he was really close. I think he, I think now he knows kind of what he wants. He's like very very sure. No. It's like three times he's been caught just a little bit late. It was seven seven at the end of the first period, right? Yeah. Nice touch. I'm kind of surprised that counterattack was thrown in there. Yeah, me too. It was, was so no it was real, so late. <laughs> no real acceleration. The distance was pretty big. Just <laughs> easy finish for Marcus. Nope. <laughs> I totally missed that. Was that attack repose near means? Sorry, the video's cutting out at points, yeah. No problem. If that ever happens, just rewind it. Yeah. Um, so, it seems... I mean, this just this time specifically, I think Marcus is starting to get a little either tired or complacent. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Oh, I mean, look at, look at the finish of that, especially in the slow-mo. You can see it really well. He doesn't do anything. Yeah. He just kind of lets himself get hit and realizes at the last second that that's the wrong... Like he's in the wrong distance yeah. or something. <clears throat> Maybe it's a question of fatigue, too. I mean, he's been fencing a ton today. Yeah. Um, it's also mentally exhausting, too. Yeah, definitely. Especially at World Championships. Mm hmm Oh, finally, one of those surprise attacks works. Yeah. Caught him hesitating. I'm surprised he closed out. I don't know if, if someone I thought, actually got the blade yeah. there. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Let's see again normally. Yeah, I think he did get the blade. You can, yeah, you can hear a blade contact. It's just hard to see. <laughs> I'll see the replay one more time. Yeah, Sun got it like right at the beginning. Target, right? Yep, I yeah. thought so. Yeah. <laughs> he almost pulled him out. Almost pulled him out. Yeah. As a referee, I want to say, you. he almost missed. <laughs> Was Marcus saying there, I gotta move back more? Yeah. Oh, look at Sun! So sneaky. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh! That's what you get for trying to be sneaky. <laughs> Just capitalizing on the hesitation. 
rotation. He's been setting up that touch the entire bout. Yeah. He just had a couple, like a few touches ago, right? Yeah, he, he got a successful line once, and he got an off-target line once. Yeah, so... Mixing in those counters, actually, just like, it forces your opponent to take a second guess every time they take a step forward. And if you go confidently like that and just commit to your lunge... Dan's got to be happy with that one. Definitely. That was like the most BBFC touch I've ever seen. <laughs> Sun hasn't done that for a while. Yeah. Well, I got caught sleeping a little bit there. What's the score right now? Is it 10-10 or... Uh, it's bad filming on my part if you have to ask that question. I mean, it's probably hard. The machine seems to be kind of far out. Yeah, it's tricky because, like, from my perspective, I should be showing the score more, but every time I leave the strip, it becomes overexposed. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully, I'll show you in a second. Wow. It's a nice touch. And there's a score. Okay, 11-11. I feel like that touch was also just more just been a little lazy. I'm surprised that wasn't called line, honestly. Mm, I think it's a little too late. I don't know if they'll change it. It's just like Song was already so well on his way. It's hard to call that a line. There's also a little disengage at the end with no search. Interesting. In the Saber, none of that stuff really matters. <laughs> really? I mean, it's probably not... Yeah. Oh, wow, they called line. They changed it. Yeah, it's it's probably not great for me to admit that out loud, but yeah, they just like if you if you have anything that like remotely resembles a line as a, as the attacker, you should always just beat the blade, because then it's not line no matter what. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just you're just leaving it up to the referee, and no one no one really cares about like whether there's a disengage or whether your arm is perfectly straight. And again, like I probably shouldn't admit that out loud, but. If you're if you're attacking in saber, just beat the stupid blade, and then there's nothing else that can be said about it. There's no argument. If you beat the blade, it's your right of way, no matter what. Yeah. But I've seen people like, quote unquote, like disengage with the line by like pointing it at the floor and still get called valid line. So, wow. yeah, just just always beat the blade, okay? <laughs> For the two saber fencers watching this analysis. <laughs> That they called that line. Usually, people don't admit that there's a line in yeah, situations like that. Let's just Especially let's just like that short acceleration because, like, he only <clears> had the lineup for what double advance lunge. I think it was yeah. Which is like the bare minimum, really. So here we go. Advanced, One advanced, cross advanced, lunge. So it's advanced, it, advanced cross step. Yeah. Lunge. Wow. Well, Sun nice call. Nice and, touch. Yeah, that's, an, that's the under finish that was working well for him in the very beginning. Yeah, it's also the fact that he finished short and like kind of took a smaller step back to, sh like, to kind of give the idea that he was going backwards. And then when he saw that Son was just waiting, he just took over again. Sorry, let me watch that one more time in slow-mo. Oh yeah, I see exactly what you mean. And then he just caught Sun off guard again. Yeah. It's great timing, great setup. And especially this light into the bout, these are touches that you can't really give up. Those touches where you just lose concentration for a second and then just get hit because you're not paying attention. Yeah, this is not the time to not be paying attention. <laughs> Up very well. Yes, he is. <laughs> In between touches. Flares. I like it. <laughs> uh. 
Wow, nice balance from Marcus there. Yeah. Also, way to put his point on. That's yeah. A really quick attack. <laughs> That's a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. As a saber fencer, I can tell you that for sure. Ooh! Nice touch. Speaking of getting your point on. Yeah. I thought that was a great counterattack. Yeah, he was definitely patient there, but not indecisive. He knew what he wanted, um, and so he was able to finish. On those ones before, when he got hit in line or when he got hit by a counterattack, he was, I think he was unsure where to finish going in, and so that's why he wasn't able to put his point on I think here he was just sure of where he wanted to end up. Gotcha. Really nice touch. Oops, I missed oh, that one, sorry. Wow. Beautiful touch. Okay. Very good at that touch. <laughs> I like that a lot because the last time Sun did it, it caught Marcus off guard, and this time he was ready for it. I also yeah, like I also like that the ref just carded him for taking too long. Yeah, they're doing that more and more, especially if you take off your mask. It's uh, pretty quick yellow card. Or oh my god, he snuck up so much. Yeah. He's, he's gonna get away with wow. it this time. <laughs> well. Ooh! That's risky. That's really risky. Yeah. And his, his arm, like, from a technical perspective, his arm was so behind his legs there. Yeah. I even like said it on commentary. <laughs> if he had done an attack just stepping in there instead of kind of being in place. Marcus, you mean? I think he would have had it. Yeah, I think he would have had it. It just, the flick would have missed. Yeah, I think he just got a little lazy on his arm. Or on his leg, sorry. Oh, he, I think he got that one. I need to look at that again because the, the arm movement was a little blurry for me. Is that parry post left? I think left took the first parry and then right took the second one. Maybe they'll have a, a replay from the, from the side. Oh, yeah. It's just hard to see when, because the green light seems like it turned on so much later. Yeah, these, it's it's annoying. There's the there's the one master box on the ground, and everything else is um, is connected wirelessly, so it's all a little bit late. There's the replay you want. Yeah, purpose touch. And Marcus is celebrating while trying not to fall on his <laughs> ass. That's another one of those touches where he was athletic enough to, and he took enough lessons to be able to kind of pull that one out. Oh my you god. Can tell he's very tired. Too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So even then, having the control and, and the ability to tell your body to just push through and get that touch, that's, that's fantastic. That was a great bout. Yeah. A lot of interaction really between the two fencers. There was a lot of, um,. A lot of tactical adjustments from both of them. Yeah. And what's cool is that they're two very, very different fencers. So being able to see contrasting styles is pretty fun, too. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, definitely to great fencing by both of them. For sure. Not just in this bout, too, the whole day. Yeah, to be able to make it this far at once is not an easy feat. <laughs> yeah, and Marcus, he, he opened the day by destroying Faconi, right? The defending world champion? Yeah. I don't remember what the scores were exactly, but I remember he beat some pretty pretty strong fencers. Yeah, the, in his bout with Faconi, I think he was up like 10-1 or something. And then... Wow. Yeah, and then it ended up getting a little closer, but he still won pretty handily, like 15-7 or 8. I'm just making that number up, but... <laughs> um, but yeah, he... he Oh, crap. I think I'm out of something. It doesn't matter. It's, we're, we're done with that part. Um, <laughs> so who do you think... Do you have any thoughts on, like, who's going to to win the Olympics if it ends up happening? Um, I think 
think it's such it's such a toss up for Montoil. There is nobody in the world who is so dominant that like I give them the best odd. It's not like like Owen Saber who medals at everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's uh, take let's take a look at who who won just this year. I think I think Faconi is the most consistent by far. He's so solid. Um, so if you were to pick one person, it would be him. But Garrick has had tremendous results as of late. He's peaking at just the right time. Yeah, he is. I'm always happy to see Garrick doing well. So yeah, and Alex has also had two really nice results um, the past two competitions. And Itkin and won Nikita, a World Cup this year. Nikita won the Nikita won the CIP. It's and the kid beat all the Italians to do that, I think. Really? Oh, no, 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 no. That was in, in Bonn when he beat all the Italians. He beat Garoso in the final. So this year we've got uh, Yavador, Casara, Focconi, and Alex. Alexander meddling at the first one. Another medal from Alexander. Damn! I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Another one for Garrick. That was a crazy one. Race. This... This guy had the day of his life. <laughs> yeah, well around. Fenced really well. Yeah, he did. Um, Another new American and a new Italian making it up there. Yeah. Chermisnov and the defending Ficone's world champion. Last, this is Ficone's worst results of the year, I think, as a top 16. Really? Unless, I don't know if he lost in top 64 at a new point. Uh-huh. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, he's so consistent, it's crazy. First there. Yeah. Yeah, so you definitely see Focconi, Garozzo, Teremisinov towards the co- top a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, top four, he won. Top 16, top eight, and then top four again. Yeah, but you, you see the French, the Italians, and the Americans at the top consistently of every tournament. And yep. then also Teremisinov. <laughs> and <laughs> once Yavador. I mean, it, it's... The thing is... The, the fact that people like Lavador are coming in or Jeremy Sinov or I mean even if you look at Worlds there was Marcus there was Son um, and then a few years back there were the Japanese right after um, Rio it's just you never know what's going to happen at the Olympic Games or the World Championships yeah it's true it's it's, it's crazy yeah um, I don't think anybody really expected Lafort to win World Championships last year also um, that came out of left field yeah and for me, I was shocked by how well Zarabchenko was fencing. He beat Kasara. Yeah, he, oh, look at that. Yeah, he beat Cheung, Kasara. Oh, that's right. He beat, he beat Cheung, too, really badly. He had a he had a rough season up until Worlds. So yeah. He always seems to fence well at Worlds. I was watching him earlier that day, and I thought he was going to win the whole tournament based on the way he was fencing. He just looked so good. <laughs> And then Lafort just destroyed him. Lafort was also having a day. Yeah, he was. No, I think his first opponent must have. Was that a second opponent? His that that was in the sixteen. The the Korean withdrew. I think he had an injury or something. Oh. I was watching whatever was going on across from it. I think it was actually. Maybe this one. But yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any any real prediction I can make for the Olympic Games. <laughs> oh, yeah. I tried to predict World Championships last year, and that didn't go very well. Man, I think... Uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, the Americans will do very well. The Italians will end up also pretty high up. Yeah, if I had to put my money somewhere, I would put it on an Italian or an American. Hopefully, the, for us, it would be an American. Is, you really want to see the tableau before you make any predictions. That's true. Because a lot because of it comes down to matchups. And, yeah, and, and if you predict that, like, for example, Alex and Garrick go one and two and then they fence in the top eight or something just by the draw. Then yeah, <laughs> then that's not going to happen, obviously. Cause, yeah, because there's still, there's supposed to be one more competition that determines the world ranking, I think. Yeah, which, which World before. Cup, is, which location was that supposed to be at? It was supposed to be in a room, but it got canceled. So now I don't know where they're going to put it. Yeah. 
That's crazy. It happened, and the, the, the tournament got canceled when a bunch of athletes were already in California. Yeah, they kept saying it's still going to happen. We're just going to make it have no spectators. Um, and then I had to go home. Yeah. <laughs> because Harvard kicked us out. Yeah, I remember. But, Dude, this is crazy. Um, like, it's, especially for the people who are who have either locked for the Olympics or are almost locked, it's so hard for them because in some countries like um, in Spain and Italy, it's a ticket to leave your house right now. And yeah. so, but but you still have to be super ready for the Olympics. Yeah. Like you can't physically slack at all. You have to just like act like it's going to happen and just, I guess, train as much as you can in your house. Yeah, which is ridiculous. Like how much space do you have to fence? Yeah, it's just a, it's a weird situation. Yeah. Um, what a weird time to be alive. <laughs> yeah. It's also crazy because if they do end up maybe postponing the games at any point, it just sucks for all the athlete, all those athletes that have been like working towards peaking right at that time. Yeah. Because then they have to readjust and then kind of restart. Yeah, I didn't think about it like that. Especially, again, with like being forced to be inside the whole time. Yeah. That's crazy. It's just... Hopefully we get some news sooner rather than later. Yeah, we still totally. have like what four four months for the Olympics. Yeah, I mean I'm so. I'm hoping this whole thing will blow over in a month or two, especially if the whole if like everyone observes the quarantine procedures correctly. Yeah, it should definitely get a lot better. I don't think the whole thing is going to be gone, but like I don't think it might it'll be gone until maybe fall. Damn. <laughs> um. Well, not, not even gone, but, like, acceptable for us Under to control. start returning to campus and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think we'll definitely start seeing improvements soon if everybody starts following quarantine. I know they were ticketing people here in California. Really? That's great. Yeah. Um, just, like, when people were just walking around, at like, on, like, or when they left their cars in public parking and went to, like, hang out in public places. Yeah. I mean, they got tickets. Yeah. They were Which, my my friends in Spain were saying if you if you go out it has to be for an essential purpose like visiting the doctor yeah. or getting food and if you can't prove that you're doing one of those things then they'll write you a ticket and if you're in a group of people the ticket is like ten times more expensive. Wow. Yeah, we have. Well, I don't know about the whole ticketing rules, but we have the same. That's the same order we're under right now. And you're in New York, right? Yes. So you should be <laughs> under the same rules now. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been behaving like this since about two weeks ago, because I. It's crazy that that Boston or Massachusetts didn't do anything like it, and they are also just. Yeah, going I know. Crazy with the virus. Yeah, it yeah, it's it's wacky. Hopefully, they follow suit. I agree, and part of it too is like even, like, so much of it is it's it's not just about protecting yourself, right? It's especially as young people, the the trend has been that. People who are either sickly or older get hit by the virus harder. And so yeah. if you're infected and you get like a mild cold type symptom from it, yeah, it doesn't affect you that much. But if you infect someone who's older or in bad shape, like that could kill them. So yeah. it's, it's really important, not just for yourself, but for your family and for people you don't even know to just. Yeah, that you need to keep safe. I mean, we all got to care for each other. Exactly. I mean, if, it, if the roles were reversed, we'd want old people staying in, even if they got a small cold, just so we can die. So yeah, totally. I think it's definitely fair to do the same for them. For sure. And just just acting like this for, you know, even one month gives scientists a chance to find a cure or a vaccine or something. Yeah, and it allows those who are, like, who have, like, mild colds and stuff like that to uh, to recover so that when they do go out after a month or so... They don't infect anybody. Um, yeah. Yeah, every, everything outside is a lot healthier, so hopefully it gets better. For sure. All right, dude, thanks so much for doing this with me. Yeah, thanks for, for having me on again. Yeah, maybe we'll do another one, depending on how long this thing lasts. Sounds good. Uh, you know where to reach me. Yeah, for sure. He's always fun. Thanks, man, I appreciate it. Yeah, adios, dude, stay safe. You too.